Hi everybody. My name's Nicola and I, I and I am I can't speak this morning. I am simply a stitcher. Welcome to my channel. Um today I thought I'd do a little stitch with me and it is a new start piece today. So welcome if this is your first visit here. Uh welcome, pull up a chair, grab a stitching, grab a brew, and we'll have a little bit of a stitch along. Um, so today I've got a new start and anyone who knows me will know that I absolutely love the film series The Lord of the Rings and I have bought some new patterns recently. Um, if you go across to my Instagram, which will be linked below, you'll be able to see a post with all uh, 10 of the Lord of the Rings theme patterns and my daughter and I did a random number picker and uh, out of the 10 uh, this is the one that won so it is an old like a travel in the style of the old travel brochure travel uh, poster and it says visit Mordor at the bottom and it's got a an image of Mount Doom and the eye of Sauron so yeah so I thought we'd have a little bit of a stitch along excuse the glare from my window uh, with this piece today I am currently 2% through. So I, I, only, I started this last night. Today is, oh, crikey, what's the date? It's a Tuesday. I know that. It. I think it's like the 17th or something. Let me have a look. Yeah, it's the 17th of May, uh, 2022. Um, so as I said, I thought we'd just have a little bit of a stitch along with this one and see how far we get today. And also have a bit of chat, a bit of a catch up and uh, yeah. So let's just make sure that my stitching is in the middle. That'd be a good idea. There's going to be a bit of shadow because I've got a sunbeam that's coming in from sort of that side uh, through my door. Um, but I think I think it, I think we'll be okay. I think you can still see plenty. So I hope everybody is doing okay. I'm not so bad. Um, been a little busy. You'll hear lots of cars coming. Oh God, the shadow's horrific, isn't it? You'll hear lots of cars coming past because at this time in the morning. Um, people are going to work and things. It is currently 20 to 8 in the morning. The house is quiet. I would normally do this during my work's lunchtime, but it's quite late today, half past one. So I thought I'd get this done now and then Andy can do his thing later on and then we can get it out on the channel. So yeah, so I've been a little bit busy. Um, I've been out and done a little bit of filming with Andy. Um, he's going to have an episode of Village Idiot coming up, which I'm pretty sure some of my stitching friends will be interested in. He visits the village, as do I, because I go with him, um, where the Lowry stand is made. So we visit, we visit Grasby in North Lincolnshire, I want to say. I'm pretty sure it's North Lincolnshire. If it's not, the video will correct me, I'm sure, the, when it comes out. So, um, I've been working. Uh, work is still going okay. There's lots of positives. Um, I think I'm done just getting to that stage in my life where I think, well, why can't I just sit and stitch all day? Why do I have to go to work? If I could make a living off this, it'd be perfect. But yeah, that's not happening. Um, I've been trying to get an Etsy off the ground, but I'll be honest, it's just the time at the moment, the time to sit and do it. I've got a lot on this month. Um, having said that, I'm not doing a floss tube at, at the beginning of June. I'm going to skip uh, a month and look at one in July so might be able to do something then um, if I'm skipping the floss tube um, if you've not seen my floss tube you'll not know why but I'm skipping it because is that focused okay that's better um, we've got a family holiday 
So we're going to have a few days away. And, and uh, a bit of rest and relaxation. Some time by the sea. I love the sea. Um, and I can't wait, basically. And because that sort of cuts into the day that I'd normally film my floss tube, I'm, uh, I'm skipping a month. But it does mean that in July, I am going to have lots to talk about. Because I've had a finish. I'm heading towards another finish. Although whether or not I will complete uh, Avarice remains to be seen. I've got this new start. Plus the, the haul. Um, so yeah, it's... I'm, I'm going to have a big video in July. You kind of all better be ready. <laughs> So, channel news, um, I am over 725, 725 subscribers. Um, I know I say this every video, but um, I'd like to sort of, you know, get up to a 1,000. I've been doing this over a year now, and it's a bit gutting when I see lots of people that have been doing this less than a year that are at 2,500 subscribers already, and here's me still struggling to get to a 1,000. So... If you would be so kind as to hit that subscribe button and press the like button, um, it'll just help me get a bit more YouTube visibility. And it would be much appreciated, more than you know. Okay, so, uh, me. Well, I've been doing okay. Um, I've had a bit of a kind of a wake-up call, I suppose you'd call it. Um, the doctors, I went to have some bloods taken, some blood tests done. And my cholesterol is quite high, which is unsurprising, considering that I do carry my weight around my middle. And it's that's one of the sort of the risk factors of, for high cholesterol. So I've had to do a bit of an overhaul of my diet. And I'm trying to do some more walking. Uh, because I think working from home, it's terrible. We do, you know, become sedentary, um, which is which is not good, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking at my diet and I'm, I'm trying to get a little bit more exercise. Um, I don't like eating salad when I want something that's, you know... I know that, that fatty foods are not good for you, but God, they taste nice. <laughs> um, I'm also cutting back on things like cheese, uh, fried food, starches. Some starches I'm also cutting back on, you know. Um, and I've, I've overhauled, you know, how I have, what I have for breakfast. So instead of having like toast with cheese or jam or marmite or just even just butter on it I'm sort of having porridge now and um, you know having more things that are healthy for me so it can only be a good thing um, I've then got a follow up early next month at the doctors for a sort of a physical once over just to make sure that I'm physically okay because I've experienced one or two uh, small problems, which I won't go into here, um, but definitely I'd like the doctor to sort of have a look um, and see what needs to be addressed. So, yeah. Um, Family-wise, child had an 18th birthday, so that's... The youngest child turned 13, the middle one turned 18, and now at the end of the year... The eldest will turn 21. So that's all three of my girls all having a milestone year this year, uh, which is quite fun. Um, so for 18th birthday, we went out and had a meal and, you know, did a bit of socialising as a family and etc, etc. It was quite nice. We enjoyed it. So...
trying to think what else I've got to tell you. Nothing springing to mind, but I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll carry on chitter chattering anyway because we're only <laughs> sort of 10 minutes in. So, yeah, so let's tell you a little bit more about these charts. So, there, this is one of a series of 10. And the other ones, well, this one is Mordor. If you know the Lord of the Rings, you'll know all of these places. So the other ones are the Shire, obviously, um, Isengard, Rivendell, Rohan, Minas Tirith, um, Mordor, uh, do, 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 do. let me have a look at my pattern keeper uh, oh Erebor the, or the Lonely Mountain Helm's Deep and Lothlorien and I'm kind of torn as to which one is my favourite um, if you go look at my Instagram then like I said you'll see all of them um I mean, Rivendell is my sort of favourite place in the Shire. Uh, it was, well, say, in the Shire, in Middle Earth. Um, but I do love the look of the Lothlorien uh, chart. Um, so, yeah, um, these were from uh, Country Magic Stitch, I think it's called. I think it's Country Magic Stitch, not Country Magic Cross Stitch. Country Magic Stitch. Yes. Um, now, I don't, I'm not sure where this lady comes from. She has an Etsy shop, which is currently closed. And that's where I first saw these pieces. And of course, when the Etsy shop was closed, I did sort of, you know, have a grumble to myself that I'd kind of missed my shot. And, you know... Um, but then I looked a bit further and she has a website and I had a look on the website and the website said basically we're not taking orders and I was like oh, I'm never going to get these charts because I've been promising myself these since February um, and then I was looking further in the website and it, she said it said on the website that, that she'd opened a a buy me a coffee and in the buy me a coffee you can claim some charts so I mooched off over to buy me a coffee and she also does sort of other charts that they're like in a similar style but they're like Hogwarts and Game of Thrones and you know that that sort of stuff but I, I've although I've watched the Harry Potter movies I've I've never watched Game of Thrones, so that does not interest me. But, you know, there's also like movie posters and stuff that are done in this similar style, having the coffee. So, playing 10 charts was $22, which converted to Great Britain pounds was about £18. So... I claimed them and I sent an email because it requests that you send an email to say what you want. Um, and then 48 hours later, the charts had appeared. They're all Pattern Keeper compatible. The only thing is, is that you have to input the, th the floss numbers, which is not a problem. It's only a few minutes uh, each time. So, yeah, um, I was really happy and, you know, like I said, I mean, they, they arrived with me on Sunday and yesterday I input them onto Pattern Keeper and put in all the thread numbers and then today I'm already stitching because I went and kitted this one up last night. Ordinarily I'd have started from the top, but Sod's Law... I am missing one colour and it's the main colour at the top of the piece. So 
I decided to start and work from the bottom up instead. It's not a problem. You know, I don't mind working from the top or the bottom, if the truth be known, I'm not, not fussed. Um, so yeah, um, I started this yesterday evening. Now, I, I'm sure you guys know I do tend to stitch fast. I mean, I look like I'm stitching quite fast now, but trust me, if I'm not talking, I'm even quicker. Um, I average a thousand a day, but most of the days I'm going over that. However, saying that, there are some days like yesterday, I just sort of squeaked in 900 because I was busy kitting up. Um, you know, there have been like days where I've done like 600. Um, but then there have been other days where I've, especially if I've done lots of blocky stitching, like these charts are all blocky stitching. Um, and I've done like 1800 or something um, before I've even sort of blinked really um, also during work again don't tell the boss while I'm waiting in between phone calls I've picked up my stamped cross stitch the Christmas window which I'll be showing in my next flush tube because there's been significant progress on that it's easy to do while I'm just sat waiting for a call, uh, there's no. Just see my tie up my stand again. That's it. Um, there's no um, messing about really because it's it's stamped. Um, and like I said, because I've had some significant progress on it, I'd like to show that in my next floss tube. So at least one finish, if not two, if I can squeak it in for the next floss tube is coming up and I'm quite excited about that because one of them if I do get it done Avarice is my oldest whip so it would be great to get it finished after 11 years I want to say I'm pretty sure it's 11 years So, yeah, there we go. Of course, I've still got a lot of stuff in the queue to do. I still haven't started my new year, new start, still. Um, the week after our holiday, I'm actually off work for a further week and at home. So I might kit up and start it that week. I might not, but I mean, I've only been saying it for five months. I cut the fabric in February. It's still just sat waiting for me to do something with it. Let's get a new piece of thread, I think. So there we go. so good that letter R doesn't it so nicely defined the patterns are really good I mean they're not many colours I think the, the one with the most has got about 15 colours in it this one's got I think about a dozen 13 this one's got 13 colours in it and it's going to be stunning when it's done yeah and I think what we'll do is we'll spin the wheel for the next one as well it seems to be the only way to do it because I, I simply can't pick um, and out of the ten charts there's only two of them that have got some back stitch in them and that's uh, Lothlorien for the trees you know where all the sort of dangly stuff's coming off the trees shall we say <laughs> and the Moria one uh, for the door to Moria so it's turning nice and pleasant here in the UK now although you know we still had some days of rain 
in fact yesterday was one of them it was an on and off rainy day but on the whole it's turning quite pleasant at the moment um we've had temperatures uh, in the sort of mid 20s and i got a little sunburned when me and andy were walking around these north lincolnshire villages um believe it or not I was wearing sort of ballet flats rather than trainers, which was a, a daft mistake, really, when you're walking around. And the tops of my feet got sunburned. I, I'm one of those people I can get sunburned on a snowstorm, you know. Uh, but I, I was just like, oh, it's it's been a few years since my feet got sunburned. Um, so it doesn't hurt. It's not painful, but, oh, Blimey, it itches of a night time. It really does. No matter what I do, no matter cream, you know, cold or cool washing or whatever. Blimey, it itches. So. There we go. So, with it being sort of May, well, let's hope that this weather's in for a good sort of two or three months. Until September, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? and uh, have a little bit of a summer um, as i said we're having a uk holiday at the end of may beginning of june i'm off work for a week here and then in july i've got some time off in july and then my next one is in september so hopefully i can take advantage of some of the nice weather So, have any of you got any summer plans, any holidays or anything in mind? I'm always open and looking for suggestions, especially things to do within the UK uh, with the kids. Um, we've always kind of had a family ethos of cheap or free, um, because there's plenty to do without having to pay a lot for it. And of course, you know, we're all struggling at the moment with cost of living here um for those of you who are not in the uk uh, we're seeing uh prices raising from um supermarkets for food petrol stations um and even things like the energy to our homes the costs have been you know cripplingly high and a lot of families have been put into hardship um you know because of this so like i said we've had a, always had this family ethos of cheap or free um and even more so at the moment because although you know me and andy are both working our disposable income has dramatically decreased of late which is a great shame you know, in respect, because I still have to settle financially with my ex-husband and, you know, I'm kind of worrying about how I'm going to sort that, but that's another story for another day. But there we go. I absolutely love stitching on 18 counts. If it's two over one stitching, 18 count, I think, is my favourite. I don't mind 14 count, but sometimes it can look a bit gappy. But certainly for two over one, 18 count seems to be my go-to of late, because that's what the cat's uh, on. The uh, Gecko Rouge one that I've just finished. Let's just move this along slightly. we're going to have oh. that's it yeah my gecko's on 18 count uh, I mean 25 is my go to for one over one um, 
I will use 28 for 2, uh, 2 over 2. I'm not fond of stitching on 28 count 1 over 1. Pandemic's on 28 count over 1 and it is a very small stitch which is why I don't work on it very much at the moment. Although I really ought to get back to Pandemic. I've also got some 20 count fabric knocking about, but I'll be honest, I've not really tried stitching on the 20 count. Um, so, I just sort of tend to reach for the 18. <laughs> So I'm working in a little while, um, so just marking off on my pattern keeper. Yeah, working in a little while, uh, 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. Something interesting came up on my Facebook, on my page, uh, my personal page, um, I think it was last week. A few years ago, I was like, I would love a 9 to 5, Monday to Friday job have every weekend free, um, you know, no early starts, no late finishes. Well, it's took me five years, but I've got there. Um, you know, so I, I'm proper loving now the nine to five life. Like I said, no early starts, no late finishes, um, no, no, no messing really. It, it, it's, it's good because I've got my weekends on my own. Um, one weekend in two we have Andy's children here and then the other weekend me and him go off filming. It, it's great. I, I'm, I'm proper loving it. I think that's the best thing about my job is the hours. I have a day in the office this week. Even though primarily I work from home, um, we still have one day a month in the office. So I'm having that this week. So that day I probably won't get more than 500 stitches done, I would have thought. Um, because obviously I'll be losing a good two to three hours of stitching time just in traveling. And then of course there's my lunch break, although I do take a project with me. I can't work on it like I do at home, two-handed stitching, have it on my Lowry, etc, etc. It's simply a case of, um, I just take a small project in a hoop and then I just sit and work on it. Um, and it's like one hand stitching. Um, I might get a couple of hundred stitches done, depending on how much time I have to spend eating my rabbit food on my diet. Because I'm still trying to to lose a few pounds. Not going to lie, that's a bit of a struggle at the moment. But hopefully the increased activity and the overhaul of my diet uh, because of my cholesterol level will help. Sorry if you can't see the stitching much or if it's a bit wobbly. I think we're going to be okay. And of course this shadow is, is quite annoying as well. It might not show up as so much on the playback. I'll have to see. It seems like my new... Um, way of filming my floss tube is working as well because by having uh, using my phone camera instead of my laptop webcam my uh, physical matches the audio which is a lot better um, a lot better for, for you guys to 
to see that, so yeah, seems to be working. Let's get rid of this and have a new strand. Look at that. Got quite a lot done on this morning. Got one new strand of floss. Let's so yeah, Avrice is uh, over eighty five percent now. Um, still about thirty five thousand maybe stitches to go off the top of my head so still a, a fair chunk to do but I'm getting there with her um, picking her up working on her a few days at a time putting her down I haven't decided what I'm taking with me on holiday yet I've got a small gecko rouge piece which I might take um, I might even, you know, go so far as to take Avrice. I'll have to see. I haven't decided. I think, for me, for everybody else in the family, they all worry about what they're going to wear. For me, I'm like, what am I going to take to stitch? I don't bother with, I mean, although I do, you know, read read occasionally, I don't bother with books on holiday. Um, but I do bother with stitching. And of course, because we're not going abroad, it's so much easier. Um, having said that, I've never had a problem when I've gone abroad. And I've gone on many, many flights and taken my stitching. Um, I often see people asking on Facebook groups, etc. What do you do when you're taking your stitching on a flight? Well... I usually take a project that's small enough to fit in like a slightly oversized than a four Ziploc sort of pouch, um, which normally could have a paper pattern in it, an eight inch hoop fabric thread um, and needles. Now, in terms of scissors, flights are very you know flight companies and things are very twitchy about what you take on board a flight now i do believe and correct me if i'm wrong in the comments that the scissors i think it's a four inch blade but i've known people who have had scissors of about four inches overall length and they've been confiscated at the gate. So for me, I always play it safe when I'm going on a flight. And I never take scissors. Not even, you know, these are about three inches long. But I wouldn't take those. I don't take scissors. I don't take squizzers. I don't take snips. I literally take a pair of nail clippers. As long as my floss is cut to length, for cutting the thread at the back of your work, or the front of my case, nail scissors will do the job. And nail scissors are readily available and they have no problem with you taking them on a flight. I've also heard of people using dental floss boxes and the uh, DMC do like a thread cutter which you can actually have around your neck like a pendant some people have, have gone on flights with scissors and you had no problems and that's fine I'm not suggesting for one second everybody's going to have a problem for me though it's a case of let's avoid that problem before it should arise 
And like I said, I've been on many flights, many flights, especially in the last few years, where Angie and I have been to Poland, the Ukraine, Romania, Norway, Denmark, France, Spain, Northern Ireland, Italy. I mean, we were supposed to go to Iceland this year, but we'll not talk about that. Coffee's built. Definitely need it this morning. So yeah, so I've been on many flights in the last few years. And I've taken stitching on all of them. Without exception. But I've never taken a full pair of scissors. Always my nail clippers. Or nail clippers, should I say. They're specifically for this purpose, you know, because it's a bit grim cutting your own nails and then using them to cut your thread, isn't it? <laughs> but there we go. I mean, I suppose all the stuff's washed anyway, but still. That stitch doesn't look right, does it? What I'm going to do, I'm just going to over sew that because I think I missed the hole. There. That's better. That's what talking does. So, there we go. So, Andy is um, still off Village Idiot in. He's really enjoying it. And, you know, like I've always said to him, I'm his biggest cheerleader. Um, this week he's got something special happening. Um, I can't say too much about it, but he's got something happening. Um, and his normal filming schedule has changed to accommodate that. I would really love for him to, you know, get bigger. Um, his channel to grow uh, bigger. Because he does want it to be self-financing and to make a profit from it so that he doesn't have to go out to work as well because at the moment he's still doing both. And it's it's a lot. So... There's a motorbike going off down the road. It's not as loud as a normal one. There's always one. In a minute, in a few minutes, we'll start to get the school kids turning up for school. I live round the corner from um, a nursery school, a first, uh, well, a first school uh I'm in my late 40s, and when I was a kid, these schools were called infant schools. So, you had an infant school, you had a junior school, and then you had a comprehensive school. And now it's it's all very different, you know. Um, you know, like the, the primary schools and secondary schools and the classing, the class systems changed and... Instead of being in a particular year of that particular school, it's year whatever, and it just runs throughout the whole... Oh, it's so confusing. Um, I often have to ask my her daughter, what year are you in? Because I know that she's like second year. And she's like, yeah, it's year eight, mother. And I'm like, oh. But for me, you're second year comprehensive. You know, for her, she's year eight, secondary modern. <laughs> or whatever it is now. <sighs> She's my last child in school. In a few years' time, she'll leave school and that'll be it. All of my children will have left a full-time education. This doesn't seem possible. It's only two minutes since since the eldest one was born. 21 years is a big difference in my life, I tell you. 
I've gone from being a stay-at-home mum in an unhappy marriage, in a rented house, on a rough estate, to being a mum of three, a stepmom to two, divorced and happily remarried, living in my own home, which I own outright, on a, I wouldn't say it's a, a posh estate, but it's a reasonably nice, I think we use the term reasonably nice estate. Yes, I've come and I'm working in a job that earns me decent money. So, and I'm working for a international organisation, an international company. So I have job security. And all of them things are huge for me because, you know, I've been able to provide a stable home for the children. Um, being able to continue earning a living and of course I've got a wonderful husband out of it as well so yeah life is good and I'm I'm happy uh, apart from this flaming thread come on off you come. That's it. Silly thing. Right, so we're 40 minutes in. I think we might be able to eke out another few. I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to say goodbye now. And then just sort of carry on and stitch, you know, really in silence so you get the kind of sound of needle and thread. Um, and I will be back for another stitch with me before I do my next floss tube. As I said before, if you're not subbed, please hit the subscribe button. It does help an awful lot. It helps me with my visibility, the YouTube algorithms and all that. Follow me on Instagram at Simply a Stitcher. I do post on there fairly regularly. So you'll be able to see my updates. But for now, I wish you farewell. And we will speak soon in the next video. And just in this little, little bit of time that I've spent with you, I've got about 200 stitches done. So, it's all good. Bye for now, everybody. Take care.
two letters down. Bye, everybody.